Hello, I'd like to give you just a really quick presentation on the differences between CockroachDB and Google Cloud Spanner. Now, uh, to start, one caveat, I am no Spanner expert. In fact, oh man, there is so much to learn. It's such an amazing database. Um, but we're just going to point out a couple of things where we feel that CockroachDB is a little bit different than Spanner and, and why that might be interesting to you. So first of all, Spanner, like I said, is just a, an amazing database. Um, you know, this is the pioneer of this whole distributed SQL movement. You know, uh, if you go and want to actually read a, a really wonderful paper, um, you know, the, the Google Cloud Spanner uh, white paper is just really, really fantastic. But the way that Google describes this in the very first paper that wrote, Spanner is a Google scalable, multi-version, globally distributed and synchronously replicated database. It distributes data at global scale and supports externally consistent distributed transactions. Basically, this is basically taking big table, making it relational and making it awesome. Uh, for kind of you know business critical workloads and and a key piece of a lot of the things that Google has done, uh, not just from its availability in in, in GCP, um, but also uh, internally at Google. Um, you know now Spanner and CockroachDB do share a very similar architecture, a very familiar history. Um, the architecture of Cockroach is inspired by by Spanner, but it's really slightly different. Um, and, and Cockroach has innovated in some different areas over over time. Now. Both of these databases are distributed SQL. It takes the best of relational, it takes the best of NoSQL, and it, it merges all of that together and deploys it in the cloud. And so both are kind of really phenomenal cloud database options. Now, I would be remiss without mentioning our three founders, uh, Spencer, Peter, and Ben. Uh, all three of them were in the, the employee 300 range at Google. And, you know, they, you know, I think Peter and Spencer helped build Colossus, which is the backend file system. Ben was building Reader. They had a lot of interaction and all the internal tools they used to build things, including Spanner. Uh, when they left, they were frustrated when they were starting a, a company. Uh, they didn't have the exact same tools. So ultimately, the, the advent and the, the, the inception of Cockroach truly really came out of frustration. Uh, they just started building uh, a version of Google Spanner, which was open source and, and named it CockroachDB. It's really, the, the name is really after the resilient nature of, of these two databases. So really kind of the advent of this really comes out of Google. This is partly, you know, Google infrastructure for everybody else. So what are some of the differences? Uh, first of all, you know, uh, Google Spanner is cool. It's tied to select GCP instances. So you can't really run it outside of GCP, whereas Cockroach is you can run it across multiple different cloud providers on any cloud provider really anywhere. It's not really tied to any explicit hardware, whereas Spanner is tied to hardware that includes, uh, you know, a hardware atomic clock. It's a really interesting blog post on our website, you know, living without atomic clocks. It gets a lot more detail into this. And really, can I deploy this anywhere and everywhere from a cockroach point of view, where Spanner is, is going to be tied to, to particular instances. Now, if we thought start thinking about multi-region and you know multi-region is kind of this concept of how do I put data in different locations to either you know survive the failure of an entire region or maybe place data close to users so they have this low latency access to this so you know having this granular control over data location in cockroach is really really powerful right um, at the row level of each table we define this um, and having those simple controls is another area in which CockroachDB does kind of go a little bit different than, than what, what the implementation details are in Spanner. The third is the freedom of using this in Kubernetes. Since you know, Spanner is kind of tied to explicit hardware, you can't really deploy it you know, just ad hoc in any Kubernetes cluster. And CockroachDB was really built as a distributed system and, and really optimized. It really works beautiful in these distributed environments like Kubernetes or, or even in, in Anthos, which is you know, the, the Google version that, that will run on any cloud. And so, you know, if you're going to be running Kubernetes, you know, CockroachDB can run directly on that, um, and even if you're using any, any version of it. And then finally, some of the SQL coverage. I think, you know, Spanner's done some really great work over the past couple months in terms of, you know, becoming Postgres compliant. But things like, you know, spatial data um, and, and, and some certain data types are still not covered in Google Spanner. So it really comes down to your workload and what you want to accomplish. So that's four quick ways in which we're a little bit different than Spanner. Again, a great database, um, but I think various different reasons why, you know, you would use Cockroach over them. Now, you get co started with Cockroach right now. You use CockroachDB serverless. Um, you no credit card required. Go to you know cockroachlabs.com. You can sign up. Um, we're going to give you a free database, uh, five gigabytes of storage, up to 250 million request units. Um, serverless, complete, automated, uh, elastic scale, uh, both up and down. Um, it's it's going to be highly resilient. It's just a Postgres database, but better. 
Uh, and you could go start using that right now because we are wire compatible with Postgres. But if you want more, more kind of control, uh, CockroachDB Dedicated is another way of getting started very quickly. So, okay, well, thank you for taking the time today. That was a quick overview of CockroachDB versus Spanner. Thanks and have a great day.